Hi, I'm Heath with Titan Machinery. i um, been a service tech here for just about 19 years. Today we're going to be going over the 8240 combine. A couple things on the cleaning system you'll want to look at is right on the front of the grain pan here, there's going to be a seal up there that's going to seal your grain from the front of your pan so it can't drop off. Um, if that seal is getting wore out or ripped, you need to be replacing that because otherwise you'll get grain that'll leak off the front of your pan. Also on your grain pan, just kind of look at it. Make sure you're not getting cracks that are happening in there. Because if you start to get cracks, that grain pan will actually start trying to fall out the bottom. Another thing you want to look at is actually look at your cleaning fan. Just kind of look in, spin it around by hand, make sure you don't have any of the blades that are getting bent or any of the holders that are getting cracked up. Um, if you start getting cracks on them, um, if you let it keep going, what can happen is your fan can actually br start breaking apart. Also on the fan, um, there's a hydraulic motor that drives it. Look at your hydraulic motor, make sure you're not leaking out of the, the shaft seal on that motor. Also look at your eccentric bearings in here. So you got your, your main shaker bearings here. Actually take and spin this and make sure you don't have a, a bearing starting to get rough in either the eccentric arm or the pillow block in behind it. And then you have couple idler pulleys and the tensioner. Make sure that you don't have a bearing going out on your either one of them pulleys. Then you'll also want to come to the back of the shoe frame and look at your shoe rollers in here. A lot of times what will happen is actually on the right side the roller in here will get a flat spot war in it and what can happen is as this as your shoe is going to pivot um, if it gets that flat spot in it, it can actually pivot off and then drop the back of the shoe down and actually wedge your shoe to where it can't pivot back to self-level again. Um, if you do have a flat spot in it, um, they did change from a plastic style to now actually a ball bearing. Um, if you want to update your machines to the ball bearing, you have to get the mount and the bearing. So you have to take the take both mounts off one on each side off the shoe frame and then take the shim washers off of your old plastic rollers and put them on the new mount with the bearing. So now we're going to move up the into the back of the machine and we're going to look at your sieves. Make sure your sieves aren't cracked. So come in here, usually they'll crack right here or on the outside here. Um, just kind of come in here, look to make sure that they aren't cracked on the left or the right sieves. And then if they are cracked, you can actually go in here and weld these back together as long as they aren't completely broke apart. Um, and then also you'll want to look at your, your sieves. So if you're doing small grains and you got an inch and an eighth sieve in here, um, you'll have inch and an eighth top sieve bottom sieve and pre-sieve. If you do change sieves on it, you have to go in and tell the machine that you have changed from inch and five eighths to inch and an eighth or vice versa. Then you have to come in here and recalibrate your sieves. When you calibrate them, you, uh, you manually close your sieve down and then you open it up till you have a quarter inch between your fin and the, the fin in front of it. So you want to get that and then you go in and tell the monitor that there's a quarter inch gap here to where you're giving that monitor that the baseline for the quarter inch so when it opens or closes it can actually know this is a quarter inch and it can give you an accurate reading off of that. You have to do that every time if you change from inch and an eighth to inch and five eighths or go back. You have to do that with your top sieves and your bottom sieves. You also have to have the sieve opening the same on your left side and your right side. If you have them to where they're different openings on the, the left to right, 
you'll end up with a cleaning issue because you'll be letting so much more air up the side that's open further versus the other side. Another one, you got your pre-sieve up there. Um, you have the linkage over on the right side here. Make sure that that sieve is actually able to move up and down. A lot of times what I've seen is it'll actually start getting um, rust in there and it'll start sticking that linkage rod as it comes through and opens your sieve up. So if you can't come back here and open your sieve, um, you have to actually pull your pre-sieve out, get your linkage underneath freed up, and then put it back in. Another thing to look at is if you have the style chopper like this one has, you can actually put that rubber flap in there. You can see the pins that are holding that piece of rubber in. What that does is when your stationary knives are up in place, that rubber flap keeps them from, if you do take a rock or something in, and then blades don't swing out like they're supposed to, if they actually break off, that'll save your sieves, because it'll actually send them blades down through your sieves you also want to look at your elevator housing here your chain make sure that your your chain is adjusted right so down on the bottom here you want to be able to grab this chain slide it slide side to side on the sprocket but not be able to pull it down off of it if your chain is too loose just come up here and you got your tensioner for your elevator chain right here so you loosen up this bottom nut and then you tighten this top one here and what that'll do is that'll actually take and shove this rod up to tension your chain when this rod gets to the point where it contacts this piece of steel you gotta loosen your chain all the way up take a half link out of it what I usually go by is when you have to take a full link out of this chain it's time to be putting a new chain in so when I put a new chain in, I usually do the top sprocket up at the top, and then I also look at this bottom sprocket, and if they're starting to get cupping happening on it, replace that one too. And then on the inside of the elevator, you'll want to take a look at your slip clutch up there. So you got your, your pulley that drives your elevator. Go in, grab a hold of that pulley, and try moving it. If you can get that pulley to start wiggling on them splines, um, you gotta be replacing that slip clutch so you don't start tearing the splines off your elevator housing. Same way, you know, look at your tensioner arm there. You got bushings in there. Make sure you can't get a bunch of movement happening on that arm. And also take a look at your belt. Make sure your belt isn't cracked up and everything. So you want to look at your bubble up drive chain up here. Um, check your links on there and make sure your links aren't getting loose. Um, if they are, usually what I'll do is I'll take the straight 60 chain off there and put a 60 heavy on there. Also on the inside of the elevator here, you got the other drive chain that drives the elevator head. Same way there, I'll run a 60 heavy chain on there too. Um, the tensioner for that is going to be right right on the inside of the elevator here. It's on a spring gauge. So you'll loosen up the, the jam nut, tighten it up, and then re-jam the nut once you get it up to the black bar on there for your tension gauge. So then you'll also want to be checking this bottom gearbox here for your unload auger to make sure that you haven't got this full of water. So I usually recommend guys drain this once a year um, and then actually check because there's a top seal up here so up on top here you can actually have water that'll sit in there and it'll actually can fill this gearbox with water if that seal goes out so if you drain this out and you get a bunch of water that comes out of here you're gonna have to be replacing this gearbox you also want to look at your look at your chain tension so you got your your chain here and then your chain that drives your cross augers. Um, make sure these chains are both tensioned properly and that you don't have a lot of movement in these links. Now we've come up in inside the hopper and we're gonna start checking, 
checking some of the augers and tin work up here in the hopper. So what we're gonna check is we're gonna check the, the bubble up flighting. Make sure you don't have a bunch of flaking happening on your flighting. Um, also check your, check your tube itself. Make sure you don't have holes that are getting into your tube that it's getting wore through and thin. Um, if, there, if you do have holes in here, you can put inserts in here to actually get the tube to, to cover the holes up. Um, also, you'll want to check your down at the bottom of your bubble up auger. You have your bubble up gearboxes down there. So you'll want to check them too. Um, make sure that they're not leaking, that they're full of oil and everything. Um, then you'll also want to be checking your checking your hopper floor. Make sure you don't have holes that are starting to get into your hopper underneath your cross augers here. Um, so if you are starting to get holes down under these cross augers, you can put an insert under the auger and that'll, that'll take care of any holes that you have happening under there. Um, also, you'll want to be checking your, your vertical auger down over here. So you'll want to check your elbow, check your vertical auger, make sure that's not flaking. And then you'll also want to be checking your splines. So if you take and take the top cover off of the elbow, actually grab one of your augers and try moving it. If you can get, if your augers move together, your splines are good. But if you get one auger where you can move it a quite a bit, before the other one starts actually moving, then your splines inside of there are getting, are getting bad either in the vertical auger or the horizontal auger. Um, also, one other thing I look for on the 10s and 20 series machines, um, under your elbow, there's a plastic bushing that sits under the elbow. Um, if you if you take your auger and you swing it out of the cradle and you start getting to where your auger's dropping down, take a look at that plastic bushing under there. If you start getting a lot of wear on that bushing, it can actually start collapsing your hopper in. So then what you end up doing is actually welding an insert into your into your hopper so that your auger can pivot on that.